this year, I'm participating in Romy Hill's Mystery Knit Along. It's a beautiful lace shawl. The first clue just dropped last Friday. And it's a perfect project for beginners in lace, if you've never done lace, or if you're a passionate lace enthusiast. It's going to keep you interested. It's beautiful. It's not very complicated yet. And Romy created a series of mini videos on her YouTube channel showing all the techniques that involved in the knitting of this show. There is also a huge Ravelry group where people exchange information, ask questions, get help, or just share, share their projects. So if you're sitting on the sidelines and you don't know if you should join it or not, please do join. But today, I want to introduce you to people who make this event such a success. People just like you, people who I'm calling Humans of Romy Hills Mystery Need Along 20. Hi, Christine. Welcome to my channel. Hi, Irina. So you guys are the dyers behind the kits for all Romy Hills Mystery Need Alongs. Yes. And you've been doing it for all 11 years. Yes. So tell me like the first time you did it and how did it change over the years? Like what was the first time like and what it is like now? That's a really great question. <laughs> uh, we've done a lot of yarn since then. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess in some ways there is, I would say, a thread of continuity actually more than difference um, in that... Uh, Romy typically, uh, she chooses two colors and she does tend to like to knit out of our uh, base yarn called floating, which is alpaca, silk and cashmere. One of the biggest changes I would say is that we started, we may have started with floating. So what happens is, is you have choices of yarn and you have choices of colorways, right? So currently we have three choices of yarn and three choices of colorways for people. Um, I think previously we might have only had one choice of color and maybe one or two base yarns. Um, and so it has expanded in that way. And uh, the last maybe four or five years, the three base yarns we've offered are, like I said, floating uh, alpaca, silk, and cashmere. And then we have Annapurna, which is merino and cashmere. And then we have Rumor, which is a merino silk blend that we typically only offer for special events, such as Romy's Knit Along. Well, what makes Romy such a great person to work with? Like, I mean, obviously, if you're doing it for 11 years, you're enjoying it. So what makes her so special? Yeah, oh my gosh, where to begin? Um, I mean, Romy is from California. So, you know, I think that there's some commonality in being from this place and really enjoying the landscape. We both find the landscape in uh, this kind of region and Nevada region, desert region, very, very beautiful. And it inspires, I think, both of our work. Uh, so we have that connection. Um, Romy has a background in music and my wife has a background in music. So they really enjoy talking to each other. There's just some really sweet personal connections we share with her. Her community is very, very friendly and lovely. Uh, so we really enjoy seeing them every year when we go to Stitches West. Um, it feels like a homecoming when we see them. So yeah, it's just kind of a natural kind of comfort level that we have with one another. Um, that has definitely helped along our collaboration as um, designer and dyer. Well, what, who is choosing everything? Like, do you have proposals or does Romy come and take a look at all your colors and tells you like, I'll take this, this, and this? Uh, what happens typically is that um, we've done it a few different ways. When we work with designers, we really enjoy uh, collaborating with them in the sense of, you know, getting a palette that they really are drawn to and that they enjoy. Um, we want it to, you know, be harmonious and happy on both ends. So um, sometimes what Romy will do in the past would be she'd see a color 
a stitches that she liked a lot that, you know, we had put out maybe for the first time that year. And so she would say, I'm really drawn to this color. What if we did this for the mystery next year? Um, and then, you know, things change. So she might get inspired throughout that time of something different. So then, you know, we shift. Um, so typically her two colors that she chooses for her shawl, uh, she has a, a, a lot of uh, input on that, right? And then from there, when we make the, the company colorways to go with it, we typically design those colorways. Right. So she'll say, I'm really drawn to these kinds of purples. I'm really into speckles. And so then we create, you know, her color combination and we show it to her and we say, how does this look? And she might say, this looks great. Or could we tweak this a little bit? And we tweak that a little bit and then build from there. Well, if you think about women's designs, like in general, what mm. descriptive words come to mind? Well, uh, definitely lacy. I don't know. We could say filigree if we want to be more specific. Um, I think there's a really nice level of complexity. So for people who I don't want to, you know, dissuade anyone who's newer to lace or something like that. But I will say I, I really enjoy especially with the mystery shawl, that she is kind of uh, pushing the envelope with sometimes asking people to make a leap into uh, using more charts in a single piece. Um learning different stitch patterns and techniques you might not have known otherwise and that her community is there on her Ravelry group uh, and her YouTube videos. She's very, very interested in guiding you through that process. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always uh, drawn to people who create pathways to help people go a little bit beyond maybe what they've previously known, kind of take that next step. And um, if they want, if they want to, you know, knit garter stitch scarf, that's totally fine as well. But um, yeah, so I really enjoy that she does that for people. And I find that lace has this uh, difficult reputation, whereas in reality, it's just like four or five stitches that repeat themselves. And yeah. Because she puts the instructional videos, it makes it super easy for even beginners. Like I'm sure any beginner could still manage to need this show with all the tutorials that Romy puts out there. Yes, yes. Wonderful tutorials. Um, yeah, genuinely wants people to be included and to be able to participate and knit her work. So. Well, how much of a mystery the design is for you? Like, do, have you seen the whole show? No, and we never ask, really, to be honest. Like, we like to be surprised like everyone else. <laughs> so it's really fun for us to see it also kind of unveil itself. Um, yeah, so we don't know how she's going to use the colors. Um, nothing. Yeah. How far in advance do you start planning? Like the, as mm -hmm. soon as the mystery knit along is done, are you start talking about next year's colors? Or is it like a month before? Like what's the process preparing for this? I mean, uh, like I said, at Stitches West, sometimes she will in the past, um, you know, things have changed so much since the pandemic and attending Stitches West. But in the past, you know, she might see a color that, intrigued her um but both of us work pretty intuitively so uh i wouldn't ever put it past either of us that kind of a month before stitches west we would change gears all of a sudden and like you know just shift things a little bit due to some kind of external inspiration um so I would say it's like in the back of our minds, but we also have a rhythm going. And since we've worked with each other for so long, we do know each other pretty well in terms of uh, that kind of shift and what have you. Um, so, yeah, it's a pretty free form, free flowing. Mm -hmm. So there's all the shipping the kits, like it has to be done ahead of time. Does that put like extra stress on your business to get all these kits ready to ship them on time so people can start on the day when the first clue drops? Yeah. So one thing is, uh, you know, we're natural dyers. So we use plants and one insect to create our colors. Behind me is a color chart that shows our dyes 
as each individual color as a single source. And so we combine all of these different plants in different percentage combinations in order to create the colors that you see that Romy uses. As you can see on here, there's no pure green, right? Things right. like that. So um, the entire dyeing process for us is fairly labor and material expense, like intensive. Um, so yes, we spend a long time. There's um, multiple applications of dye that go on to each skein. Um, there's a very small team. There's five of us here working currently. Um, so yes, we do a big push up to, up till we go to stitches West. Um, so we have kits available for people there. We also typically collaborate with Romy on a new sweater design, um, and create, you know, exclusive colors for her sweater design. Um, and then, yeah, we get the samples of like the sweater, not in the case of the mystery, but then we go to stitches, we put it out. Mm -hmm. And then during stitches, we do a virtual stitches West. So people who can't come to stitches or prefer not to, for whatever reason, um, that they have an opportunity to participate. Um, so then yes, when we come back, we start dying and we, dye and skein and wash. We wash every skein by hand. Um, and yes, then ship. And it's a major push in the shipping. And um, we drive everything to the post office and it's a lot of labor. <laughs> well, how did that change in the 11 years? Like are more people buying kits nowadays than they used to in the first years? Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, I think kits in the knitting world have always been popular, but uh, I have seen the trend, I feel, increase. Um, and sometimes I equate it to perhaps the increase of stress in all of our lives, that it's kind of nice that someone has curated kind of a bundle for you. And, you know, I like giving people a little bit of option, which is why we've got the three and three option. Um, but I think it just really helps. Um and so, yeah, you get everything in your bundle and then you're ready to cast on and participate and get to the fun part of knitting. What happens if somebody somehow runs out of yarn? Like, are you able to ship extra? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, all sorts of stuff comes up and happens for people. Like, that's just part of the process, right? So definitely we have what's called our color library skeins of yarn. Um, and uh, we, if someone sometimes needs like 10 yards of yarn, we'll take our color library and we'll take 10 yards off of it and send it to them and, and what have you. I think Romy is pretty good. It's very rare that someone in the mystery knit along has run out of yarn. So I think she when she's designing really does take into consideration and adds percentages and stuff. Um, so people don't run out of, she doesn't knit to the last inch or anything like that. Um, well, Ro Romy sort of uh, allows her participants of this knit along either to buy a kit, right? Or to just use their stash. Of course. Do you have uh, any advice for people who are planning to use their stash on how to choose colors best mm -hmm. for Romy's designs? I mean, I think that's probably really best to Romy since she's the one who knows the, like, again, we don't know the design. Um, so, I mean, in general, I would just say um, choosing, um, she typically chooses a lighter color and a darker color. Um, and like, for example, this year, she's using a darker purple and a lighter purple. So I would say to people choosing a darker color and a lighter of the same color would be good. Um, but people have such a, you know, intuitive sense of their own, you know, what speaks to them in terms of color. So I, I do go through the group and I see a lot of people choosing maybe complementary colors, maybe contrasting colors. Um, some people even like to put variegated yarn with lace, you right. know? Um, and there's times where someone shows me a combination and I think, wow, I can't envision that. And they put it together and it's amazing, you know? So I think one of the beautiful parts of knitting and color is that it's a constant learning experience where there's always something to be learned and enjoyed and um, where your mind can expand. 
Right. Is it difficult to be different, different every year? Because like, if you're doing it for 11 years, you obviously trying not to sell the same exact kit. Like, are you afraid you're going to run out of colors one day? Yeah. I mean, we have hundreds, which is amazing to me because really um, there are about 12 dyes that we use. Um, it's very much like cooking where, you know, you're given 12 ingredients. Like I feel like sometimes I'm on kind of a cooking show where I've been, I've been given 12 ingredients and I need to make, you know, 500 different delicious tasting meals from those 12 ingredients. Uh, so, but then there's moments we sit there and we're, we have so many ideas. We don't have enough hours in the day to bring forth our ideas. So I guess it just keeps flowing and it keeps going. And, um, but yeah, certainly I think, you know, especially with the combination of lace and that Romy does prefer to use, you know, solid to semi-solid. So the lace pattern really shows up. Um, and then, you know, yes, trying like, she really enjoys purples. So yeah. What's your um, advice about the yarn bases to use for lace knitting? Like, how do you approach that? Do you go for the drape? Do you go for what's going to block the best? Like, what's your advice on that? Yeah, so floating is really one of my favorite yarns. We've had it since the beginning. And, you know, it's got that alpaca content in it. So it's quite heavy when it comes to knitting a sweater. Um, so I do kind of lean into that base yarn as a shawl yarn, right? Cause you get that softness and you get the drape and it lends itself so well to lace and to shawls. So I kind of, yeah, that's the one I would lean into the most. Um, Annapurna is really nice. Um, the Merino cashmere blend because it's got a little bit more, grist to it. So for example, if you're having problems with your hands, um, I think Annapurna can be easier to hold right. uh, a little bit easier on your hands or, you know, your eyes, if, you know, you want to be able to see something a little bit more and have that substantial feeling. And then the resulting shawl feels a little bit more substantial, you know? So if you like that feeling, I think that's a really nice juxtaposition and offering. Do you ever have like a, do you have a favorite uh, mystery knit along that's been, that happened in this 11 years? So is it like always the new one is the new favorite? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely always the allure of the new, right? The shiny, new, bright moon shadows is one of my favorite shawls that she's ever made. Right. Thank you. Well, we talked in details, and if you guys haven't watched Julie's interview, Julie Roswell is episode 204, so go and check it out after we're done here. You're a busy woman. What possessed you to join the Need Along? Yeah, I have been busy. Uh, my life has sort of been in, you know, in a, in a new mode this past year, trying to figure out what to do after, you know, changing from a full time job uh, for for many years to just being a printmaker and knitter. Um, so I basically spent the last year just getting ready because I was uh, doing Vogue Knitting Live in February and then I have a show in Newfoundland, uh, my first big solo show, uh, Contexture, which just opened in April and is going through to May 12th. So I haven't knitted for me. And by me, I mean knitted things that just make me happy that I want to give to other people because that's usually what happens. Um, so the last time was like December of 2021 was the last time I think I, I knitted things just because I wanted to, uh, uh, to give us gifts. So I really resisted. I think you, you asked me if I was going to do it and I was like, hands down, absolutely not going to do it. Um, and then I had a conversation uh, with uh, a couple of different people uh, that I maybe in order to move forward, I might need some sort of reset, uh, a bit of a break uh, from working on 
you know, knits to print um, because it's, I'm tired, obviously. It's been a long year and the show, getting a show together of a whole body of work is a lot. Of, uh, is a lot. Um, so after thinking about it for a few minutes, I was like, wait a second, maybe this is the way to do it. Because uh, I was like, I can't make decisions for myself right now. <laughs> I don't, I don't have the capacity to make these sorts of decisions. So maybe having somebody else do it for me, uh, like a mystery knit along, might actually be the perfect solution. Have uh, you ever so done mystery knit along? No, I haven't. And I, and when I told you I wasn't going to do it, my reason was I need to know if it's going to work for a print. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I don't know before I start knitting, I, that's not, I d didn't think it was useful to me, but that is exactly the reason why I should be doing it <laughs> because I just need to not worry about printing and just knit for a little while. So. I mean, you are a big fan of lace, like lace is your main passion. Was that one of the decisions why you decided to join this knit along? Um, there were a couple of factors, um, you know, just I think knowing Romy's work, having printed one of her shawls before, uh, the Honey Sweet, uh, I really love the way that she writes her patterns, how things are laid out. Uh, I love, you know, when I look at all of her, her shawls and lace patterns, they definitely speak to me as things that I really, I really love. So that was definitely a big part of it. And obviously, because the knit along is lace, uh, it made it easy. I don't know if, if I if it was a sock knit along, I may not have caved. <laughs> but, but this this works out because then I can sort of get some practice in. It also gave me the opportunity because it was two, you know, the recommendation was two colors of yarn and I had a bunch of yarn that I've been waiting to die. And I was like, wait a second now, I could also just get back into that a little bit because it's been a while so i mean does that make it easier for you or more difficult because like if i have to dye my own yarn i mean there's so many possibilities that it might just like slow me down even further um, yeah that's a tough one i i definitely think that it I, it makes it more interesting for me. So that's what makes it easier. Because I do have yarn. I pro I'm sure I have enough yarn in my stash <laughs> to knit whatever I want. Um, but to have the opportunity to to dye something uh, and sort of come up with, you know, what I'd like to do. And I thought I was going to end up knitting with a color that wasn't in my usual color palette that failed entirely um i ended up back with blue again but it's because <laughs> it's gonna go to somebody very special when it's done uh and that's their color so it was you know i had to give up on my idea i was like at one point i like had this fuchsia color and i would never go with pinks or fuchsias but i thought i was gonna do it but in the end this is the perfect color because it's for someone special so can we see it yeah yeah so here is spoiler and, alert everyone so if yeah you sorry spoiler it, alert yes guys for a second <laughs> yeah so i have completed uh charts a b and c all of the the repeats for chart b uh and then there's one of each of a and c and i am almost halfway through the i cord bind off <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to finish this before we meet. Uh, yeah, that didn't happen. Uh, so, so yes, I am. I'm about halfway through the I cord, so I still got a little ways, little ways to go, and then I have to pick up stitches. So, so yes, I'm. Uh, yeah, That's beautiful blue, by the way. Yeah. So, and uh, and if you look, I don't know. I can't. I can never figure out how to point. Uh, <laughs> but behind me on the loom. Uh, you can see there's the skeins of yarn. So the the second color is uh, what I did was I put this in the dye pot for you know 45 minutes, uh, and then once a lot of the dye was already exhausted, I put in the second two skeins. Uh, and so we, I I thought it might end up a little more blue, but it's sort of purple, uh, a lighter purplish color, but from the same dye pot. So they, they're meant to be together. So that's that's what I decided to do. What are the chances of you changing your mind midway and 
adding a third color or uh, your mind about the second color. I already had a moment of like, ooh, like this, like the the yellow. I was like, huh, I wonder if the yellow and the blue would look good together. Oh, that would be like, um, but, actually. I'm, but I'm trying to resist. And I also have the issue of I am leaving for Newfoundland again on Monday. So I can't, I don't think I have time to dye more yarn. So it'll, uh, hopefully that'll stop me. <laughs> so You're like, are you a fan of mystery in general? Do you like doing things that you're not sure what's going to happen? Um... I do like to have a little more control than this. Um, so it is a little difficult, but I think it's exactly what I need right now. So to let, to, to sort of let go of the control for a minute. Uh, so I do think- Do you have any prediction of what we're doing next clue? Like where do you think this show is going? I, well, obviously if we're picking up stitches around the edge and then going off in another direction, I, I mean, we're, you know, construction wise, it's going to be a little different. So I'm interested to see what happens there. Uh, so I'm, it, it's exciting. And so far the, you know, just, it's a really beautiful, you know, sort of leafy pattern at this point. And what comes next? Does it, does it change? Is it, you know, is it going to be more open or, uh, or geometric? Who knows? So I, I think that's, uh, that's sort of fun. Well, I mean, in general, I'm not a fan of mystery. I like to see what I'm doing before I jump in. But like when Romy asked me if I want to join this uh, mystery knit along, it didn't even take me a second of hesitation because, you know, there are certain designers I trust with my life. She's one of them. Like, yeah, you know, and I would say that's a big doing. part of it is the trust issue <laughs> um, because I have knit lots of patterns where, uh, you know, you're going through it going, what the heck is happening here? Um, and those are ones that you're able to read the whole way through before you start knitting. Um, so to have a designer that you trust implicitly uh, as far as the quality of the writing of the pattern and the layout and the design, I think that's a, a key part of it for me uh, with, a, with a mystery. I think mm -hmm. I, I can trust Romy um, and there's many other designers that I could as well, but uh, this was a good starting point for me for jumping off the, the edge of doing a mystery knit along. Did you find anything difficult for you? And I, again, like uh, you are very experienced lace knitter. Was there anything at all difficult? Oddly enough, I haven't done a lot of yarn overs at the start of, of rows before. So it definitely, like my hands didn't know what to do with themselves for the first few times. It's like second nature now that I've gone through it, you know, th through the three charts. But that first couple of rows, I'm like, this just feels wrong. <laughs> um, but, uh, and um, I've done I-cord bind offs before, but I haven't done a reverse stockinette. So it's fun to... I really love learning the new techniques, even though they're all sort of related. Um, but I can see the usefulness of, you know, uh, I love that bind off. I love a, a, an I-cord bind off because it does have that beautiful stretch um, that, uh, you know, for a shawl is really nice. So uh, I, I love that. I really like the idea if you're going to be picking up stitches that you have these great loops along the edge uh, to that, yeah, that should make it very yeah. yeah, it's a it's a great guide where because sometimes when you're picking up stitches, it's like, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a guessing game about right. where exactly you should be and how you know, I, you know, I think it's it's nice to have those guides and to to do something a little different. So, well, I also found like when I just first when I started, I read the instructions about custom, and I wasn't exactly sure what I couldn't picture. Yeah. So having those mini videos that Romy did, they were so helpful. And I got I'm gonna be totally honest, having a short and concise video that is like a minute a minute and a half long so many times I've been like okay I need to know how to do this thing and you go to YouTube and you google it and it's a 12 minute video but really what you need is 30 seconds long in the middle of it and yes I want to get to know people I really do but sometimes I just need the information um, and the fact that she's labeled them as these are you know 
these are short, these are concise, let me let me tell you how to do this little thing uh, without any of the extras. I I love those. So right. I, I'm I'm going back now and going through all of her her past ones to see what other little techniques that I you know that I could pick up because it's it's like a snap of the fingers. You're able to just watch it and know what's going on. So and I did that cast on again. I was like that was the first time I had cast on that way. So mm -hmm. I really I needed to I needed to see it I couldn't just read the explanation um, it makes so. it very easy when it's like if you're a visual kind of learner yeah. then and if you haven't done it before and I find that like that was one of the reasons I invited Romy to my series of uh, secrets of becoming better neither because she knows so many of those like very useful tips yeah, absolutely. And it's amazing as somebody who's knit for so many years and constantly learning new things and having done collaborations with other knitters, like knitters that I that have knitted for 40 or 50 years. And particularly when it comes to lace, it's a different world, even though there's only, you know, you knit and you purl. That, that's, you know, it's just, co you know, it's combinations. Um, but th so many knitters, lace knitting can be intimidating for, you know, just because it looks so different and looks so much more complicated. So right. uh, it's nice to have those tools in place and to have somebody who can explain it in simple ways. So uh, are you concerned at all that today is Tuesday and you're already almost done with clue one and like what are you gonna do for the next two days no I'm not too worried <laughs> I, have enough, I have enough to keep me busy but I yeah I definitely pushed it uh because I didn't I should have dyed the yarn like last week when I first made the decision, uh, but I waited until Saturday and then of course I didn't get to start knitting. That was my biggest regret was <laughs> that I didn't have my yarn ready when the clue dropped uh, on whichever on Friday or Saturday, whichever day it was, <laughs> because then I couldn't start knitting. Um, so if you know anybody else, my, my advice to you is before you, you know, before you make the final decision, before the, the clue drops, have your yarn ready and your needles ready. So, cause you're gonna wanna start knitting right away. But the um, beauty of it is because the clue is not that long and the entire show is two skeins, if people wanna start now, it's still not too late. Like people can jump into this mystery knit along and catch up easily, basically. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that it's not a problem. You know, yes, I knit this, you know, this I knit in the past day. Uh, and yes, I did sort of take a big chunk of time for it, but none of it was hard. It was, you know, it was nice. You know, I was able to relax and sit and knit in a leisurely way, uh, even though I was rushing to try and do it before we before we met up. So you hope to meet some new friends through this process? I yeah, I so I don't tend to go on forums a lot at this point. I and this week I did. Um, so I've already, you know, you know, posted a couple of pictures and had a couple of interactions. So I'm hoping, and I think having the the opportunity to ask questions because it looks like they've got some great moderators on the the Ravelry, Ravelry forum um, for the knit along, uh, and people are excited and you know cheering each other on. So mm -hmm. I think that's that's pretty that's pretty fun. So I'm looking forward to diving into that a little bit more. What made you decide to join this particular Mr. Knit Along? You. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't even heard about it. And then actually my friend Rosemary sent me the Instagram thing to say, isn't that a beautiful shawl? And I said, yes, isn't it? And sort of left it at that. And then you said, well, why don't you join? And I thought, oh, yeah, I've only got two things I'm knitting. I can just add another one. <laughs> Any regrets so far? Ah uh, no, because it's I, I sort of did the math and I figured if there's only two skeins of yarn and it's over five weeks, there's not going to be an enormous amount of knitting each week. So I can still, I'll knock it off and then carry on with my other things. So, right. Well, do you like it about this? Like, do you prefer to have multiple projects on your needles or does that no. 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason why I be, even at this moment am knitting two is because I'm knitting with a dark red lace yarn, which I find pretty difficult to knit with at night. So it gets day knitting and I've got another jumper I'm knitting with night knitting. And um, so both of those are sort of more than halfway. Well, the, the dark red lace is nearly finished. I'm just doing this final sleeve. And the the other one I've started the first sleeve. So I'm towards the end. But no, under normal circumstances, I'm very monogamous. Right. Have you heard of Romy Hill before? Like, is that your first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I've knitted one of her jumpers, actually. Um, it's called Salted Grass Pool, which is a series of vertical lace eyelets with twisted stitches in between. And she's very tricksy because she told you how to do that because it's cast on at the neck and it's got a leaf pattern down the arm. And... Um, she just says, this is how you cast on, do a provisional cast on and there's this, do this, that and the other. And at the very end, I realised I'd just done a tubular cast on. <laughs> <laughs> she never says it's a tubular cast on, but I realised, I thought, I'm pretty sure I've just done my first tubular cast on. <laughs> well, you're a very experienced knitter and you experience lace knitter. Is there anything that you found difficult in this first clue? No. No, no, no. It was pretty straightforward uh, so far. Um, no, um, I, yeah, I mean, the first, I don't know about you, but I think that, that those first patterns were fairly simple. It was just a matter of keeping count of your stitches and that's always the way with lace knitting, isn't it? Right. <laughs> okay, tell me about your yarn choices. Well, my yarn choices, and that's another reason that tipped me over the edge of doing it. Last year when I was doing this Stephen West MCAL, I panic bought some extra yarn because my yarn was alpaca and I it, there's only 300 and something metres in the 100 gram ball and I, oh, God, I'm going to run out. And I panic bought and, in fact, I had heaps of yarn. So it's going to be a bit of a rerun of, last year so that's going to be that's the gold and that was in the shawl and then i'm going to use this oh, that's which is like beautiful. a magenta for the um whatever the, whenever we get to change colors so that'll use up two balls of yarn that's gorgeous yeah. actually i love 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 this combination yes thank you <laughs> I love, that's why I decided to do it because in the twists and turns, if you remember, there's that segment, I think in the last clue where you did a little segment of your pop colour and then it's surrounded by whatever colour this one was. Right. And I thought it looked beautiful together. So I thought, well, I'm, I know it looks really good together, so I'll use it in this shawl. Do you have any predictions about the second clue? Like where are we going from here? Well, given that we've had to pick up stitches all the way around the triangle, <clears throat> I'm guessing it's that bit that we've cast off at the top is going to be the bit that sits around your neck and it's going to go out that way and down, I'm, guess I'm, ge I'm guessing. I've actually never knit a triangle a shawl before, so it's all a new adventure for me. So, Do you think it's going to be all lace, like all the way lace, or there's going to be some other things that Romy throws at us? Um, well, given that she does do cables and other things and twisted stitches, that was, I was what I was going to say when I did the salted grass pull, so many twisted stitches, <laughs> <laughs> both in pearl and at the front, at like knitting and purling, so that when everyone was complaining after doing, when they were doing twisted stitches in um, twists and turns, I was going, try doing that jumper, you won't complain. <laughs> Um, so, no, no um, I mean, I think she does do a few cables occasionally, doesn't she? But it's mainly lace. So I'm, I'm, I'm going with the fact that I think it's probably going to be lace and it'll probably gradually get a bit more complicated. So it's it, going to it, get more complicated? Well, I've, I'm just guessing because I'm thinking this bit, well, to me, I shouldn't judge, say it's easy, but to me it seems reasonably easy. So 
I'm thinking that she's, especially for newbie lace knitters, she's easing people into it and it might get a bit more. And also by looking at previous ones that she's done, like the edgings are quite intricate and mm -hmm. things. So I'm just guessing something like that. Yeah. Who knows well, though? Well, if people still sort of on the sideline and thinking, should they join, should they not join, what do you like about MCALS or Need Along Slick? The mystery. <laughs> I, I know some people don't like that, but I like not knowing where it's going. You just you just have to give up control and um, uh, just go with the flow of what the designer has suggested. And so you're not worrying in anticipation about what's next because you can't see what's next. It's just going to come up. And I think that takes... A lot of the, because I think a lot of people will read a pattern that looks horribly complex and instead of doing it bite by bite by bite, they'll just go, oh, I can't knit that because it looks too hard. So I think um, by doing it this way with a mystery, you knit that bit and you think, oh, well, I've done that bit. And if the next bit's that little bit more difficult, it just builds on your skill. And, I mean, I'm a sucker for lace knitting. I just love lace knitting. So of any variety and usually um, um, a lot of my knitting, it, my next favourite after that is colour work, um, but knit, lace work I really like. There's just something about knitting something that is this scrunched up mess when you finish knitting it and when you block it out and it just, you start to see the pattern. It just is magic to me. Well, when you think about, mystery knit along like you and i met over one of the knit alongs right yeah. do you like that social aspect of it that you meet new people and you struggle together through the clues and you don't know what's coming um, next yeah i guess so it's probably a little bit less so here in australia because we as um when you interviewed the Australian lady who's Prue, dear Prue, Prue. Um, there's not an enormous knitting community here and we're also quite scattered because it's a right. big country with a small population. So mainly I get it by um, looking on the, you know, the Instagram posts with the, with the Stephen West one and things. Um, and, I, and I don't want to blow my own horn at all because I don't want to come across as being... <laughs> But I I um I haven't actually struggled yet. Like I've been able to just work out what to do for most things quite easily. It's just it was a bit it's a bit like that the marvels of the sunless sea. I'm just so used to having to work it out for myself because I don't really have anyone I can just pop over and ask that I just mucked around with it until I got that stupid corner. Well, you see, like, I had to ask you. Sometimes we all ask each other for help, you know, and it's like... That's right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's... it's um, And you sort of think, well, there's got to be... It's got to work, so there's, uh, there's obviously something I'm doing wrong, so... <laughs> well, I mean, I um, like the fact that, like, Romy did a bunch of these mini videos, so if people don't know a specific technique, they can just, like, yeah. watch that video and it's, like, she explains everything, yeah. like, very clearly. So that's... Yes, the help. yes, I... I watched her first video as I was I was actually knitting along as I watched the video and I thought, well, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really need to. Like I was, I, I'd actually worked out what I needed to do. The only one, I the, the, the funny little cast on at the very beginning, I, did, right. I watched that bit because I hadn't ever done that before. But, I mean, it, I probably would have been able to work it out, but I thought, why use my brain when she's telling me how to? <laughs> Yeah, I, I watched and, that one too, actually, because it was like I started reading it and it seemed a little complex and I was like, okay, I remember there was a video about it. Let me just watch it. Yeah. Sometimes it's just the easier way to go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I, um, and as for the, the, I watched her doing the reverse I chord. Right. Uh, which is very effective. I've never done that before. And I watched her doing that. Once I saw basically what you had to do, I didn't need to go back and watch it again. I was able to work that out. And very clever the way you've done those loops around the edge. And now yeah, it makes just it pick very them. easy to pick them up. Well, also, and you also get bonus eyelets. 
right. around that triangle as well. Yeah, so that was very clever. I mean, the, getting back to the seagrass pool that of hers that I knitted, um, that was really clever construction too. And I, that's why I, I love, uh, not that I've only knitted two of Jennifer Beale's things, but I love knitting hers because why knit something the conventional way when you can make it really strange? <laughs> <laughs> And and because it makes it interesting because you're thinking, oh, where are we going next? You know, what's happening next? So I like those sort of challenges and that's what I enjoyed about the seagrass pool because you did, you knitted this collar and then you went over here and did something else and then you did something else and then you did a whole lot of twisted stitches. <laughs> I'm really curious of this about the second clue and to see what's happening yeah, next. Well, Yes, I am too, because it'll be interesting <clears throat> to see whether the second colour is going to be like in bands or whether it just goes at the very end. I suspect it might be just at the very end because by looking at her previous ones, that's what she's done in the past, but, you know, she could change. Who knows? I haven't started it yet, um, but I'm absolutely loving the first clue. I watched Rami's and I watched my friends Gina um, and the beginning of it, that slips the round stitch that you cast on with. It is so fascinating. And the way that it leaves nothing, right. it's just beautiful cast on. So it, that's that, actually it's very cool. cool. Like, and I had to watch, I'm so thankful that Romy put together oh. those videos it's like so helpful it is so helpful and it's not like a 15 minute video of right. introduction it's a good over an hour long and she takes her time and even if she splits the yarn she's like okay and she shows you to fix this and that and answers the question it's and it's so helpful that she keeps it up as one you know like me I probably won't start this for eh, it might be into the fourth week of it, the way things are going. Um, but I can go back and look. Right. So, Well, have you ever done this before? I did last year's. And I started late on it. I started about a week late, which was kind of, I'm a cheat on things like that because it says two skeins like this one of two different right. color of yarns. Well, last time it was kind of the same thing. And I was like, you know what? I think I want to do it all one color. So I ended up changing my mind and doing one color. I wore it once out and I wore it um, with my cousin came into town with his fiance and she was like, oh, that would look so much better on me. And that's the <laughs> last time that I saw it. <laughs> well, you got to love that though. Yeah, you know, if if I didn't love them, you wouldn't give it away, you know, and when somebody appreciates it that much and she knows that I've knit her different things and she's like, ah, oh, that's gorgeous. It would look so much better on me, though. And there it went. Well, I guess she was a knit worthy person. <laughs> she's a very knit worthy person. Well, what attracts you to MCALS and to Romy's MCALS specifically? I think... Rami's MCOWs, um, I'm just so fascinated. Um, my background is in art. Um, I was a makeup artist. And so construction of anything to me and Rami is just the lace work that she does and puts into it and the building of it is it's just incredible. The MCAL itself, um, I don't like surprises. <laughs> But I still do them, you know. Like I said last year, um, I changed my mind halfway through when I saw everybody completing it, especially my friend Gina, when I saw her completing hers up. I was like, oh, you know what? I just want one color. I don't want a two color. So, you know. Well, some with lace, it's funny because sometimes it does look better in one color. Like, yeah. and, you know, it's like surprisingly, and even not with lace, like sometimes shawls. The right texture to them can look spectacular in one color you know right i'm working on i i should say i've been working on my mother's going by the time she gets it god knows um i'm working on the um oh what is it called i wrote it down um 
the winter spring cardigan by rami and it's the one that's kind of like a cardigan but then it's lace at the bottom and you mm-hmm. switch lace you switch from like a fingering white to a lace at the bottom and just the construction of that looks so good on so many different people that's another thing about rami when she designs a piece like of clothing of any sort anybody can really wear it of any body shape my mom's short in stature and she's a little pudgy around the bottom and you know instead of having to measure like a like if i were going to do like a regular sweater for measure her bust i would measure her midsection and it just anything fits with rami's designs and that's not true to say with a lot of people's things so um i just appreciate that the thought that she goes into like I could wear the shawl or my mom could wear the shawl, you know? Well, do you like the community aspect of the knit-alongs? A hundred percent, especially um, on Ravelry. Um, And it's quite surprising that like you'll ask a question and Rami, as big as a designer that she is, she will personally answer your question, which shocked me the first time and welcomed me. Um, And she said she mentioned my, my name go forth and knit and go forth happens to be my last name she was like oh my gosh i love your name go forth and knit where did you come up with that and i said well go forth is actually my last name so i just kind of threw that in and those small things like that being welcomed by not only the designer but everyone and feeling inclusive and it makes you want to be warm and nice back because there have been times that you feel like, eh, you know, right. yeah, there's, I've, there's been a few knitting groups that I've just opted right out of after a while. Um, I'm lucky I have one here in my hometown um, and it's the local library and they meet once a month. And I was a little hesitant at first. I was like, it's going to be a bunch of old church ladies that are just <laughs> really going to hate me. But it is the complete opposite, and we all turn each other onto things like whether it's weaving. One of the ladies weaves a lot, and she introduced me to a class, and I've turned them onto Rami and several people on YouTube, and said, and they'll be like, "Well, I'm stuck on this," and I'm like, "YouTube is the best college there is out there now." So, right. Well, did you start thinking about what yarn you're gonna use for this empire? I I did, and I I think i'm going to do one color again i have some um fingering weight it's just a merino um and it's gray so again i i like the grays or the pinks i have one skein of pink so it could be pink and gray but i think i'm going to end up doing just all gray again i kind of like that well when you start knitting something do you like concentrate on that one project like when you finally have time for this do you think it's going to be like happen in one week? You're going to be. Um, you know what? With Rami's, yes, I will sit down and I'll dive into it. And the other things can kind of sit and take a back seat for a little while, uh, either to get caught up or just to get it finished. Because I see already how beautiful just the triangle is with all the leaves in it. So I'm excited to see where it goes from there. Um, I, 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 Rami's are ones that I always enjoy and love. There's been others that sometimes I'm like, "Eh, I don't really like, but I feel like I'm supposed to complete because everybody else is. So, Well, are there like, what's the the longest, the oldest whip among your projects? The longest whip? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) It's called the ice cream shawl. It's a lace piece. And it is two years old at this point. And we have only got through. So we're still into section one. Of <laughs> so it's one of those that it kind of set on the back burner and other things kept popping up. You know, it, let's do this. Thing. I have an idea. Once we're done with this M call. You okay. and I are going to finish that show. I'll knit it with you. <laughs> okay. Deal. <laughs> They'll Deal. bring it to completion. Deal. 
yeah like things get in the way like you get an injury or you've got to take your mom to the doctor or you know christmas presents and that was a big thing this year because uh two years ago i knit one person a gift and then everybody else was like oh <laughs> know you could like knit knit i thought that like you would knit a scarf i didn't know fingerless mitts or a shawl or socks or i'm like yeah what do you think and they're like oh well i would like. <laughs> I'm like oh so that's how it works now so this year that christmas list it's really long um there's probably about four people but they're all very specific on what they want you know they're like well i would like fingerless mitts I would like um, a beanie, but I'm allergic to wool, so can you do it in alpaca? <laughs> and if you have time, I'd like socks too, but I want thick socks to wear in the house. <laughs> well, something might happen. They might get lucky in one respect or another. It just this might is, not be exactly if, what they if, expect. If we start in May, then probably I can knock out those four people really well. <laughs> What do you expect the second clue? Have you seen the first clue? I have. Um, so what do you I, expect we're going to do in the next clue? Like any any predictions as to where we're going with this design? I'm kind of wondering if she's going to, since it is a triangle right now, and all of this is picked up um, on the edges, if, she, if it's just going to, but it's a five week long, so it could either be pick up this side one week and pick up this side the next week and then join everything down here. Or is she going to just keep layering as it goes? I I don't know. I You know, Stephen, his, you know, you did this section and then you put on this section and then you put on this section. His was very puzzle-like last time. Right. So I don't know if Rami's going to do that or if this whole section is going to be one pickup this time. Well, uh, they have very different approaches to knit-alongs. Hugely. So Stephen was like really overwhelming amount of knitting. It, like we did four weeks, five skeins. It was intense. It was too much for me. The last, um I I love his work. His shawl that came out after the make out, I liked better <laughs> than I did the and I was like, I wish that had been the make along instead. But you know, I'm not the designer, so you just and they're fun. It's a community thing. You know, we knit alone so much until the pandemic happened. You know, then we started having little Zoom meetings and everybody getting together on certain days of the week to socialize. But these make-alongs have been wonderful for years now that, you know, you do have that community aspect. And if you get stuck on something, you don't feel stupid by asking a question on Ravelry, joining a group, because there's so many people. It's crazy that it's a worldwide event. Yeah. When I tell my friends about them, they're like, oh, you know, it's like your, it's your church ladies at the library. And I'm like, no, no, you don't get it. I'm like, there are thousands of people that are doing this along with you. It's it's crazy. The, the community that like there's people in Poland, there's people in, you know, Australia that at the exact same time you're doing this, right. they're doing it, too. And it's the, that's the best part of it, because if you have a problem and Romy is sleeping and the I, moderators are sleeping, somebody in Australia is up and ready to help. Exactly. And I am the worst about insomnia. So my days are my nights most of the time, and I'm up till three or four o'clock in the morning almost every single night. So I'm on Ravelry or I'm on YouTube watching a video and Again, I can at that point in time join along, you know, or ask the question. Um, it's funny that um, I was re watching Rami's um, first clue, and, you know, it's live, so people are watching, and you're seeing people from all over the world, and people are like, Why aren't you in bed already? You know, <laughs> it's four o'clock in the morning there, and they're like, Oh, well, you know, I wanted to see. So tell me what knitting means in your life. Oh, it's 
huge. It's therapy. It's a hundred percent therapy and it's joy. Um, I had wanted to learn to knit for years and I had asked many people. I even at one point, and this is probably no exaggeration, 20 years ago, I bought the book Knitting for Dummies. <laughs> and I was in um, up in Old Forge. It's a small little village up in the Adirondacks. And I was doing a photo shoot up there. And there was their hardware store is like the local store that carries everything, including <laughs> yarn. And the art director's mother was there and she only spoke Spanish and she was constantly knitting. And I said, will you teach me to knit? And she was like, sure, honey, you know, no problem. And so through her, her, she was interpreting through her mom and showing me. And all they showed me was how to cast on and do a knit stitch. And I'm like, this is the same thing as crocheting. I want to learn how to do so for years, I had asked people, and finally, I went to the Almighty College of Everything YouTube <laughs> and sat down for about three months and did nothing except watch videos. And I said, I can do this, and I I carry it everywhere, even with the bad shoulder and not being able to knit. The knitting is in the car at the doctor's office, uh, waiting for my mom wherever she might need to go. Or if I'm somewhere, it's that movement, constant movement of the hands, thinking, even when I've been down and not been able to knit with the shoulder, I'm still reading the patterns. And I find a lot of joy through that because, you know, as a knitter, you get the pattern, you start doing it instantly, whether it's the chart or, and we never really sit down and read the entire thing out right. like a novel. And it's beautiful. They're like stories. And there's just so much joy. You see what the designer actually put into it and you start feeling that. And to me, that's there's just nothing better. I Knitting has become so much joy for me. And the things that I give, I know that I've there's a lot of emotion in every stitch, whether it's been anger or happiness or tears or whatever I'm going through, I'm passing that on to someone. And my friends that are getting that know that, and they are so appreciative of it. It's not like, oh, thanks for the scarf, you know, <laughs> and then never wear it. Everything that I've knit, I have friends not only asking for them, but I see them constantly wearing them. Um, I have one friend and she got the very first thing that I ever actually knit when I didn't still wasn't understanding gauge right. or weight of yarn. And I made her a scarf that turned out to be a wrap and she's always <laughs> old nature. And so she wears it. She covers up in the summertime with it to sleep with. It was supposed to have been like, you know, the nice like little scarf. Well, it turned out into like the ultra thick. I think I knit on like uh, US 8 and it was like an um, chunky, chunky yarn. So not only was I like a tight knitter, this thing was just thick. Her mom was like, you know, we could make a pillow cover for you. <laughs> well, the first project I ever knitted was baby booties. And well, I also, I just followed YouTube tutorial. I made yeah. it for a friend of mine. Well, without understanding much about Gage, that baby was wearing those booties until he was almost three. <laughs> the gift that keeps giving. Mm, yep. <laughs> so you've done this before, right? Yes, I started doing the Mystery Knit Along for Rami in 2016, and I've done it every year. So. Right. Are you a fan of mystery? You know, um, I, yeah, I did see your other interviews and stuff. I was like, what is she going to ask me? Um, <laughs> I, I would That's not, a mystery. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I, would, I would not say I was, but then I started looking at my project list and I think I am because I have done quite a other few designers too. Like I've done, you know, 
I, I made a list and there's like about 10 of them here that I've done mystery knit alongs throughout the last, I'd say three years. And I think a lot of it maybe stems from, you know, doing a YouTube channel and wanting to do something maybe a little bit more, um, has a little bit more um, people interest in, around it. But, um, but I do actually enjoy them. I think I really do enjoy them. Well, when you work on Mystery Knit Along, do you work on it exclusively or do you do multiple projects at the same time? No, I do all kinds of things at the same time. Like, um, like right now, I have, I have two, I'm doing two of the Mystery Knit Alongs. And um, I finished that on Sunday. And I'm working on the Lace Lovers. I'm in the Her Lace Lovers Club this year. So I'm working on that in the interim. And then I have some socks going on. And just, you know, I always have about, I don't even want to say how many whips I have. It's too embarrassing, <laughs> but uh, um, I always have things I can pick up and work on. Well, what do you like about Roma's designs in particular? They're elegant. They're gorgeous. Every time I ever, I've, I've never looked at one of her designs and gone, I don't like that. I, I love every one of them. And so I know that, you know, with some of the mystery needle ones I've done in the last three years, there's been a few times I won't mention any names where I'm like, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I didn't, I don't, it's not something I will, I wore. So I ended up gifting it to someone who liked it. But, um, but with her designs, I know I'm going to love it and it's going to be hard for me even to want to give it away. You know, I just know I'll enjoy it and have a good time and love the design. Well, tell me about your yarn choices. What did you pick for this one? Well, this one, um, I kind of, well, I did buy a kit from a bird for keeping warm, but then I got it and I was like, I kind of knitted that last year, those colors. I kind of, I don't know why I bought that kit. I should have bought like the purple one. I bought the coral one. And so I was like, I want to knit something different. So I'm doing, um, spoiler alert. I'm doing some yarns. I'm not going to show, I won't show it. I'll just show my yarns, but I'm doing this color with this color. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. I really like those darker colors together. And this one's kind of speckled. So it's a little bit, maybe not perfect for lace, but I am loving the way it is knitting up. Right. And I, I'm excited when this color comes in with it. So I'm, I'm excited. I think it's like speckled so lightly that I don't think it's going to interfere with lace much. I hope not. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do all that work for it to not really be shown and um, be able to be seen. And then the other one I'm doing is kind of more spring colors, little pinks. And, so you're um, doing two at the same time? Yes, I'm doing two at the same time. And this is my third time to do that because I did that. I was counting. I did that in 2018. I did two. In 2020, I did two. And then last year, I did two. It's my fourth time. And then I'm doing two this time. I don't know what it is. I just enjoy it. It's like, it was so much fun. I can't, I don't want it to be over. You know, you kind of finish it up and it's like, you're waiting for the next clue. And I'm like, I'll just cast it on another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you like about the community that surrounds Wormy Hill? Oh, the, those ladies are so, and gentlemen, they're all just wonderful. They're just, I, that's one of my favorite groups in Ravelry. And I have done like a few others and, but they're just so nice and welcoming and, you know, they wish you happy birthday on your birthday. They're just really, really sweet ladies. And, and they're just very helpful too. you know, encouraging, um, positive. I like the, the positivity of it. And it's not like, um, I don't think I've ever seen any kind of griping in that group where I've, in other groups, I've kind of gotten a negative feel and I don't like that I just want to be you know encouraged that my knitting is my happy place it's not you know me to go there and read a bunch of complaints and I don't think I've ever seen that in, in her group so I really love that group well you mentioned your channel on YouTube and it's mm -hmm. uh, knitting turnpike if you guys mm -hmm. haven't subscribed yet I'll put the link in the description of this video so please go and check out Gina's channel how oh, much you. do you uh, covered there in your channel about this uh, knit along? I talk about it all, all the time. I mean, like uh, the last two years I've covered it. Um, like I just did a video for Clue One, spoiler, if people want to go check it out. But um, I love to talk about it. I mean, I think everybody there that well, that is one of my subscribers would know that Rami is my favorite designer. I mean, I think they, they could all answer it. It could be like, who does Gina really like? Well, Rami Hill, you know? <laughs> So I think it's not a not a, a mystery to them, and I and I love to talk about it so a lot. 
Right. What did you think about the first clue in comparison to the other year's first clues? Like, was it as much work, less work, something you expected? I think it was what I expect. She's really good about, um, I think she really plans it. It's like, you know, I've done other mystery knit alongs where like, sometimes you don't know if you're going to get like five days of knitting and you can't finish the clue and you're frantically staying up the night before. Um, had that happen a few times, but uh, th- with hers, it seems like I know it's going to take me a few days. I have more knitting time than other people. I'm not working during the day. So um, I can usually finish it in a couple of days. And uh, th- so I know I have other things to work on, but um, I think she just does a good job. They're all pretty even like that. I think she plans it like that because she, I think she just wants it to be relaxing and fun and, and no hiccups you know I think it's just really well planned and and so I kind of I think it wasn't really different it, I love the design already this year there was more lace in it uh so that I'm really excited about but as far as the time it took to make it it was kind of like right on par with what the other ones have been do you have any prediction of where we're going in clue two? uh well I hope that the color this color two comes in um to play a little bit earlier I know like sometimes on her circular designs like like that one was last year's and you can see there's a lot of the color one and then the color two comes up comes in on the edge I like this one look there's a color one and then the color two comes on the edge I hope there's a little bit more interplay between the colors like on this one this one's my favorite uh, this is from 2018 and there's a little little bit of cabling in here between the two colors and I just love that. I just hope, I hope that's where we go. I think it'd be fun. Well, do you think there is going to be some sort of different techniques or it's just going to be lace? Um, no, I think she'll bring in some different techniques. Um, like I said, I'm sure there'll be maybe some cabling. Uh, I don't know. I, and I know that there'll definitely be lace. Um, I loved the bind off that we did at the top of the, the triangle spoiler, but I love that. I love the look of it. I think it's a really nice uh, bind off. Um, I would like to use that in other projects. Uh, so um, I'm not sure where she'll go. <laughs> I have no idea. Lace for sure. Maybe some cables. I hope. Well, who do you think is the perfect person to join this knit along? Anyone really. I don't think it's, um, too hard like okay when I started in 2016 I'd only been knitting for two years I started hand knitting in 2014 now I will say I'm sure there was quite a few mistakes on those shawls I make mistakes still now but I think anybody can knit this because she explains it well there's charts and there's text so that's for either either person plus I think she's also you know she started adding the YouTube lives and that is really helpful. And even uh, you can go do the to the um, to the Ravelry group, or you can go to um, the Verb for Keeping Warm. I haven't been able to attend one of those yet, but you could go there and ask some people if you're having a little bit of a problem. So I think I think anybody really could knit this. It might be a little bit of a stretch for a new knitter, but I think they could do it and would gain a lot of confidence from doing it. Have you met new friends through these knit alongs? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, just the, the ladies in the group, like, um, uh, we, you know, I, we, we wish each other happy birthdays. I know, you know, I know what's going on with them. I know their favorite colors and things going on in their lives. And, uh, you know, and then the YouTube channel and, you know, just, uh, people who love the same things that you do with the lace and, uh, knitting th- those designs and then joining the lace lovers club as well. That's just the same group, just doing a little bit different type of a project. And it, it's a lot of fun to meet with them. They're really nice. So. so if somebody's sitting on the sidelines and thinking like, I don't know if I can do that. That looks too complicated. What's your. Jump in and try. Jump in and try. I've, I've, I hear that all the time. I hear that, uh, you know, people making comments that I, I would never be able to do that. But you really don't know until you try. Or you really don't. And, um, you know, really, you just have to take it stitch by stitch. And next thing you know, you're at the end of the row and then you go back the other way and it's, it's, then you're done, you know, eventually you're done. I think anybody could do it. I think maybe it might take them a little bit longer, but if you just don't stress yourself out with 
you know, trying to keep up with everything, just enjoy it. I think they could do it and be really proud that they did it and, you know, did something new. Well, when it comes to other designers, do you usually prefer mystery knit-alongs or just knit-alongs? Uh, I've done a lot of mystery. I prefer maybe now, I think, just knit-alongs. I kind of like to see it before I knit it because I have knitted a few things that I wasn't a fan of. But um, so I think I do like to do more of the make-along so I can know what it is. I like to kind of pick the colors a little bit better, you know, because you're not really sure where, how this color is going to interplay with this one. And so that's my answer. But when it comes to Romy, you trust in her design so much that you will jump in with the mystery? Every year I will be there. If I'm alive and I can knit, I will be there for her mystery knit alongs. Yes. <laughs> I hope you enjoy meeting these people just as much as I did. If you're participating in this year's Mystery Knit Along and would like to be a part of this series, please send me an email to fiberchats at gmail.com and I'll send you a schedule link. You can be part of Clue 2 or Clue 3 or Clue 4 or Clue 5. <laughs> Thank you for being with me today. Please consider subscribing to my channel and please write in the comments what you learned from this episode. Thank you so very much and happy crafting.